Welcome to yet another preview video from Modern Tribe showing what you can expect from the Events Calendar and Events Calendar Pro 3.0. If you've been watching this series so far, you'll know by this point we've already gone over all of the new views being added in the 3.0 release. And by new views, I mean views that we built from scratch that did not exist in any previous 2.x form that are literally being seen for the first time in this 3.0 build. Those include photo view, week view, and map view. That said, there are a few views that currently exist in the 2.x build, and if you're wondering where those are going, the good news is they're not going anywhere. They're carrying over to 3.0, and while we're modifying them a bit, adding a new feature here or there, changing the aesthetics a bit, their functionality is going to be very much the same. Those are list view, calendar grid view, and day view. And while I don't think each one deserves its own separate screencast, I'm going to spend the next few minutes here collectively covering all three of them and how they behave in the new 3.0 code. Now here I am on my test site, and I've set my default events view to list, which is why setting the view picker to list view right off the bat, and we're looking at the list down below right when we come to the slash events page. We have this event bar up here that would allow us to manipulate the data and filter as we saw fit, but since I've already gone over this in a few screencasts previously, I'm not going to cover it right now. Watch the photo view, the map view, or the week view video, and you can get a better feel for how the event bar behaves. If I want to change to a different view option here, I can pick list, select the drop down, go to anything other than list that's available, but we're going to start with list view for now. Then we get down into the actual upcoming events list. It leads with this upcoming events header. It then gives us a month indicator showing us where in the broader scheme of time we are. Naturally, we're in April 2013 because we're looking at the first upcoming events, which are taking place starting tomorrow. In terms of how the events are laid out, it's pretty straightforward. You have the event title, which allows you to click into the individual event view, same place that this find out more link goes. You have the description or the excerpt over here. You have any featured image that was attached over here. And then you have the event specifics, when it's taking place, whether it's part of a recurrence pattern. If it is part of a recurrence pattern, you can hover your mouse over here. It'll show you the specific details of the full pattern and allows you to click in and see all the events that are taking place in that recurrence pattern, essentially in a mini loop format. Then you have the venue down below. You can click in and view the front end venue page. And if you elected to have the Google Maps link enabled, this plus Google Map will take you to actually view the map over at maps.google.com. You can see the consistency in formatting here. You can see the recurring events appearing. And as we get down to the bottom of the page, we can, of course, go look at past events or go see those in the future. You'll notice every page will have this month header indicating where you are in the broader scheme of time. As we get onto page five, you'll see that changes over to May. And as we get to page 11, you'll see we actually get to the end of 2013 and we move over into 2014. Here's December. Once we pass December, we get the 2014 header and the January 2014 header. Let's quickly toggle over and take a look at how month view has changed. Again, pretty straightforward for anybody who's used the plugin so far. It's showing all events that are taking place in the current month. The current day is highlighted here, indicating that we're currently on the 8th. And then you can click each of the titles and go in and view the full entry. The tooltip will bring up this nice little hover box that shows the title, when it's taking place, a thumbnail of the featured image, and the description or excerpt. And on events or days that there are multiple events, you'll notice there's this view all option. We're not gonna show 20 items going down the list on one day when there's only two items on another day because that would make things look really weird and would throw the calendar out of whack. So as an elegant solution, we show three and then we have the rest hidden behind a view all link. And you do have the option when you're configuring the events to select which ones are going to appear before and which ones are going to appear after the view all link if there's certain ones you'd like to give prominence to or not. This allows us to get into day view by clicking one of these view all links. It takes me in to individual day view for that date, in this case, the 5th of April. Here it shows them in a mini loop format. It leads with all day events. Great Fest 2013 is an all day event taking place all day Friday through all, or excuse me, all day Wednesday through all day Friday. Then we get down into the fixed hour range events starting with 8 o'clock a.m., my earliest one, 9 o'clock a.m., 12 o'clock p.m., etc. If we want to toggle forth or back a day, we can. You'll notice the consistency here. You always have the ability to go forward or back regardless of which of these three views you're looking at. You always have the iCal import, which will carry the series or the event over into iCal for you. And you can always get back to your events main page by just hitting this slash events page. Not a lot has changed, like I said, with the regards to these three views. There is one other little feature I wanted to review quickly though. Notice what you're looking at here. Upcoming events, then we lead into April 2013. Now I'm going to go enable a new feature here under events settings. Come into the events on your dashboard, go into the settings panel, and here on this general tab, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find this front end recurring event instances toggle. It allows users to decide whether to show all instances of a recurring event or just the first one. You'll see I'm going to check the box to turn it on and I'm going to save my changes. 
And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to refresh my slash events page. And notice what it added. It added a checkbox here. And what this does is it does exactly like it said on the back end under the setting description. It allows us to show only the first instance of this recurrence pattern. When it's checked, what it will do is, for example, with this music in the park post, we see music in the park at least twice on this page, three times, four times. By checking this box, it would hide every single one except the first upcoming instance. So while music in the park on Tuesday, April 9th would remain, the one on April 11th would be hidden. The one on April 13th would be hidden, and so on and so forth. This way it clears it out and shows only really unique events as you go forward. If somebody who's a front-end user of your site wants to see all the events that are coming up over the next week, but you have a recurring event that takes place five of the next seven days, that's going to waste space for them. They could use this option to hide all the other instances and really only see one instance of multiple events, which in their use case might make more sense. But again, this isn't something you have to offer to everybody. If you want to turn it off, just come back to that settings page, turn it off at any time. I hope that helps. I hope that gives an overview. Nothing too exciting on this end, minus the minor aesthetic tweaks and the occasional new feature, but it does show you how we're moving in the new direction of the general new 3.0 aesthetic, and hopefully this will get you stoked for what's to come when the new build comes out in the next couple months. I'm going to have another video preview coming out later this week. Not sure which one it'll be, but it's either going to be on the new settings panel or the updated filters panel that we're adding as a separate plugin. Stay tuned. I'll be dropping those onto the Tribe website shortly. Thanks.